Note, this video is for adults and is not intended for a child audience. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to my two-part series about doll. Today, we'll discuss why every child should own a Barbie. And in part two, we'll be giving the fashion doll industry some constructive criticism and delving into the future of the Barbie brand. So tell us, how many more shows are you planning on doing about dolls? Oh, two. <laughs> doll patio furniture and the best of Hot Rod Barbie. And I think it's gonna get really weird. <laughs> but before that, let's talk about Barbie's choice to be child-free. Tour Guide Barbie! Please keep your hands, arms, and accessories inside the car and no flash photography. Thank you! Meet Superstar Barbie, a 70s icon who revolutionized Barbie core fashion. With her disco-inspired looks and her Andy Warhol-approved celebrity face sculpt. And Superstar is right. Barbie isn't just the world's most popular doll, she's the most popular toy of all time. Since her introduction, over 92% of American girls have owned a Barbie, and most of them own several. More than 100 Barbie dolls are sold every minute in 150 countries. A Barbie dream house is sold every two minutes. Barbie has products in 45 categories with over 99% brand awareness globally. As of this recording, Barbie has 12 million YouTube subscribers the lucky bitch, <laughs> and over 2 million Instagram followers, and over 1 million followers on TikTok. There are full-blown Barbie conventions. Barbie dolls have also been displayed in museum exhibits around the world. Barbie is also the first and only non-human to win a CFDA award from the Council of Fashion Designers of America. She is a line of critically praised video games and has released multiple children's albums. Barbie has starred in 43 animated movies, television shows, and an upcoming theatrical film directed by Greta Gerwig, who is possibly the greatest female director alive today. There are also Barbie pop-up experiences in New York and Los Angeles, as well as a six-floor flagship store in Shanghai, China. Barbie is crackling with main character energy. Just look at pink cowboy Barbie. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. Oh, Barbie. So when you think of an aspirational child-free woman in the media, some stars might come to mind. There's Oprah, Helen Mirren, Anna Mae Wong, Ava DuVernay, Florence Nightingale, Rita Kahlo, Sally Ride, Laverne Cox, all accomplished. But for most girls, Barbie comes first. And I'm not here to pitch you a corporate product as a way to overthrow the patriarchy. I'll leave that one to Sheryl Sandberg. But I am here to argue for the idea of Barbie, because... Ideas live forever. And since most of us don't have the luxury of molding and sewing our own fashion dolls, Barbie is going to be the doll that a lot of kids end up with. To her credit, nobody works harder than Barbie. Barbie has had hundreds of careers. Barbie is anything and everything a woman can be, except a wife or a mom. Or a size 12. We'll get to it. As I speak to you, there is a raging culture war on women. Politicians are banning birth control and abortion rights, taking away health care for trans people, and attacking women in sports, all while trying to make no-fault divorce illegal so that women have to stay entangled with their abusive spouses. Nope, I didn't make that one up. That's something they really want to do now. I have a sneaking suspicion that the only reason many men don't call for the eradication of cis women altogether, the way that a lot of right-wing political and media leaders have been calling for the eradication of trans women, is because they need them to make babies. Trad wife culture in particular fetishizes a return to a female subservience not seen since the post-World War II era, calling on women to cook, clean, pray, and produce children. Based on their own descriptions of their ideal partner, many conservative men seem to only see women as servants or wombs. These are the people who hate the freedom Barbie's many successes represent. Nowadays, you can't even go into a school library and be assured that there will be books about Harriet Tubman or Eleanor Roosevelt. If you can find a history book, you'll learn that Barbie wasn't the first fashion doll. Different from stuffed animals or plushies, like this James Mansfield plushie that I sleep with every night. Dolls made of wood, paper, wax, or ceramic have existed since ancient times. Fashion dolls were used by clothing designers to showcase their designs to distant customers. Baby dolls, on the other hand, have always been a popular tool to teach nurturing. But author and gender studies professor Sherry A. Innes criticized baby dolls, saying, quote, These dolls do not teach about the importance of travel and adventure. They taught about the importance of maternity and domesticity. 
They also conveyed the completely unrealistic message that babies are all a woman or a girl needs for complete bliss. Lessons like this can lead many girls to have babies while still teenagers, thinking that children are enough to fill someone's life with joy, unquote. I am so sick of these people with their children. I'm telling you, they're everywhere. A woman named Ruth Handler, frustrated with the limitations of existing dolls, envisioned a more durable and lifelike doll for her daughter Barbara. While in Europe, she discovered a German novelty figurine produced for adults based on the character of Bild Lily, the heroine of a comic strip by the same name. Lily was a modern working girl with a busy nightlife. Though many sources will claim that she was a sex worker, contrary to those urban legends, Lily was never explicitly depicted as such. Oh, you really shouldn't believe anything on the internet. Everyone knows it's run by secret underground mind control experts. There's nothing wrong with doing sex work if that's what you choose, but it is interesting to me that that stereotype of an independent woman is as old as humanity and is so commonly spread today that it often appears in otherwise accurate accounts of Barbie's history. Barbie the toy. No, that doesn't make her a hooker. Sorry. <laughs> In any event, with Lily as a model and her family's manufacturing prowess on hand, Ruth worked hard to introduce an independent working woman to children. Here's a business Barbie from the Barbara Millicent Roberts line of dolls, who I think vaguely resembles Ruth. We're doing Tucson later for a business thing, you know. What kind of business you in? I'm really tempted to dye her hair blue and paint her yellow and make this into a little Marge Simpson Barbie. I'd be mortified if someone ever made a lousy product with the Simpson name on it. Initially, Barbie faced criticism from conservative parents, but still made her way to stores through smaller orders. Barbie! Quote, for the most part, the doll was hated, unquote. A Mattel sales rep told Robin Gerber, who chronicled how the handlers founded Mattel in the book Barbie and Ruth. To overcome the backlash, Mattel decided to advertise around the parents. <laughs> and thus, Barbie became the first toy to have a television commercial, airing during the Mickey Mouse Club. When girls saw this Barbie commercial, the demand went through the roof to the point where, you know, the manufacturing couldn't keep up with the demand. Now, Barbie would be the first child-free working woman that most children would meet. Barbie, you're beautiful. You make me feel my Barbie doll is really real. Here's a Disney World Barbie 25th anniversary. Disney World straight up sucks now because most of it has been taken over by billionaires and a timeshare scam. But this bit goes off, you know? And anything that upsets Ron DeSantis is good. Did you know he had a Disney fairy tale wedding like right before he started the feud with Disney? Very normal man. <laughs> anyway, as soon as Barbie arrived, kids went wild for her and eventually their mothers did too. That summer, Handler recalled to Gerber that it had seemed the entire world had gone, quote, frantic with demand for Barbie. It turned out that there was indeed a market for the concept of an independent woman. While dolls like the Disney princesses had already entered the market, Barbie's unique qualities propelled her to unparalleled success. The key differentiator was Barbie's choice. Barbie didn't have a royal birthright. But I am the princess. At least not yet and instead she had to make a career. Barbie was a woman who understood that you needed to work to get what you wanted, but that didn't mean she had to do it in a humdrum way. We put the really foundational stuff, the empowerment, but then we overlaid it with a little glitz and glamor, so it became far more palatable. I have a head for business and a bod for sin. She also chose to remain child-free, making her independent, aspirational, and dangerous. Three things young people desperately crave and need healthier outlets for. Barbie can't get married because... Barbie can't have a baby. And the reason Barbie can't have a baby is because Barbie can't get married. Barbie was about the period in a young woman's life, you know, before she was weighed down by a family. If we did it as the brand keepers, they would think, that she was married forever and 
it would take away from the open-ended play. I've always admired Barbie as like a feminist figure. I like how empowering she can be and not how inspiring she is, not just to young girls like myself, but everyone who fell in love with Barbie. It's someone who has no interest in having any kids. I like the idea that she can just do what she wants. I work with kids at my job and I absolutely love it, but to be responsible for one, it's just, no, I would not want to do that. Whenever I tell someone that, they're always like, but you'll change your mind eventually. And I'm just like, no, I'm perfectly confident in my decision. Thank you very much. So I like how it's just a prime example. I could just focus on myself and my career and my passions. Quote, the thing about Barbie was she was meant to be imagined into different situations and given different clothes to wear and given different stories. It was really radical, explained historian and journalist Dr. Amanda Foreman. In 1963, the New York Times came to the same conclusion, crediting Mattel for, quote, the revolutionary idea that little girls today are viewing their girl dolls increasingly as themselves and not as their babies, unquote. Ruth herself craved this representation too. Quote, I love my children. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Quote, I love my children, but I wasn't suited to taking care of a home. My whole philosophy of Barbie was that through the doll, the little girl could be anything she wanted to be. Barbie always represented the fact that a woman has choices. When I was a kid, the only person I wanted to be besides Britney Spears and Bugs Bunny was Rosie O'Donnell. I have coveted this Rosie doll for years. And now she is my favorite doll. Actually... I decided I needed um, to preserve one if I was gonna unbox it. So I got this one to save and I opened her. Just the idea of a rosy Barbie doll captured my imagination. Even on this little small scale, even conceptually, I could act out all of Rosie's very specific jobs as an entertainer and a philanthropist and a truth teller, and most importantly, a Long Islander who moved to Manhattan. Because if I could act all of that stuff out, maybe I could do it. You have a tutor, I take it, yeah? Spoiler alert, I kind of did. My favorite dolls were Mary-Kate and Ashley dolls, and I love to use my Mary-Kate and Ashley dolls and pretend that they were in movies and it just allowed me to be very creative and create my own worlds. I liked the idea of like customizing things and putting my own vision into this doll and giving it a makeover that kind of reflected what I thought looked good. You can style them and you can just make them reflect what your ideas of fashion and beauty look like. In Barbie's first year, Mattel became the number three toy company in the world. Part of the success was due to Barbie's business model, which, similar to the model used for razors and razor blades, sold you a doll, yes, but more importantly, sold you a variety of clothes to dress the doll in. The outfits were meant to represent a change in the doll's identity in the most easily understandable way that children can receive such information. Barbie has always had the latest fashions emulated directly from runways. Oh my God, side note. It's like a little shoe box. Look at this streetwear Ken. He's wearing makeup. Can you even believe this? God, Bad Bunny is hot. But in addition to high fashion, Ruth also made sure that Barbie could offer more casual or professional clothing so that girls could see their own lives reflected back at them as valid and even aspirational. And if I don't ever get married or have a baby, what? I get bupkis? Think about it. If you are single, after graduation, there isn't one occasion where people celebrate you. We have birthdays. Oh, no, 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 no. We all have birthdays. That's a wash. I am talking about the single gal. Hallmark doesn't make a uh, congratulations, you didn't marry the wrong guy card. Dr. Ernest Dichter, who worked on the doll's development, explicitly wanted her to become a role model. And she was. According to Dr. Erica Weissman's 2014 study in Sex Roles, play with Barbie can influence girls' perceptions of their future career possibilities, giving them a sense of agency and, in turn, higher standards and ambitions. Though her first job was as a fashion model, Barbie was promoted to fashion designer herself just one year into the industry. Barbie was an astronaut in 1965, long before any real woman could be, before women could even have credit cards, and before men made it to the moon. Barbie was also the first woman to run for president of the United States. Oh, you meant the president of the United States. The United States of America. 
USA for short. 50 states if you include Hawaii. Most people do. I'm definitely pro-Hawaii. In 1973, she became a surgeon during a time when just 9% of all doctors in all fields were women. One time, she was even hired by an eccentric billionaire to dress up as a giant bat and fight crime. Boy toys are weird, too, if you think about it. We are brainwashed to see Batgirl, who does violence as normal, <laughs> but Barbie's dangerous because she's pink. Also, the existence of Angel Barbie implies that the character has died at some point and been risen from the grave like Jesus Christ. Oh my god, what an ecclesiastical serve. Poor Barbie. I get to Corvette. Even Barbie's hair has been a revolutionary development on a few occasions. In the 1960s, Barbie's usually fluffy hair was made available in a pin straight option, a trendy way for younger women to say that they did not identify with their parents' generation, who often had their hair set in rollers for days at a time. Black Barbie's natural hair texture has been a very welcome addition to the line, allowing children to see the beauty of black hairstyles. Totally Hair Barbie gave girls the freedom to express any hairstyle they wanted and quickly became the best-selling doll of all time. Beyond her hair, her abilities have evolved as women have felt more liberated in society. During the 60s, Twist and Turn Barbie was made to move her hips in ways that almost got Elvis arrested. In the 70s, often called Barbie's sports era, she achieved more specific physical feats and athletic wins than any action figure ever has. The, the 70s were a crazy time. I experimented a lot. <laughs> in the mid-2000s, she got inspired by the Bratz doll aesthetic and pursued glamour and social media stardom. I'm a doll collector and I took an interest a couple years back when I found out about the Barbie Generation Girl one and just after seeing all the dolls, like they had my heart and I just knew I wanted to collect them all. Barbie had like come a long way, like maybe at one point it wasn't really the best role model, but now like for the most part, with all the diversity now, I'd say it's a pretty good role model, but like back then, maybe not so much. <laughs> This doll is Kenzie. She's a Mycene Barbie, which is definitely not a brat doll, so don't say that. But she's so hot, right? She's rooted eyelashes. I'm basically only including her in this because she's pretty, so. Nice bling! This is her boyfriend, Hudson. I love them. Okay, that's enough of that. Today's Made to Move Barbie also has signified a broader approach to overall wellness which is problematic in and of itself if you think too much about the Barbie to Gwyneth Paltrow pipeline, but feminism is a process. Nice. The Leaning Panther. I like that. Yoga's hot. Also, like, why is an action figure okay? It's geeky, it's understandable, oh, you like that. But then if you call it a doll, it's, oh, there's, it's different, even though they're literally the same thing. They can be the same thing. There's some action figures that has hair that you can brush. There's action figures that you can change their outfit. And then there's some dolls that are literally, there's a pose, Barbie's really five points of articulation in the beginning, which is an action figure. So that's the thing. It's like a gendered, it's a gender, definitely like a binary gendered name label for these toys that are just toys or these artworks that are just artworks. Today, Barbie isn't just the singular blonde character you're probably picturing and that I'm dressed up as. In fact, she was never meant to be. The original Barbie was white and thin, yes, but she also came in different hair colors, pointing to the idea that there was no one true way to be Barbie. While Mattel invested in Black-owned toy businesses who found massive success making dolls in other races, the first Black Barbie was designed in 1973 by Kitty Black Perkins. So she really had her own personality. She was named Barbie, and I named her that because I wanted her to be associated with the Barbie group, but I did not want her to um, have Barbie's personality or Barbie's look or anything about her that was Barbie, um, but just attaching the black Barbie name to her, then sales really uh, took off. Now, whether you subscribe to the idea that Barbie should be Black or the idea that Black women deserve their own characters and original product lines, 
The Barbie team has provided families with a variety of options, from Black Francie to the marvelous world of Shani to So In Style, which were the coolest Barbies ever when I was growing up. We've been marketing black dolls within the Barbie brand since 1968, but we felt it was time that we designed an African-American fashion doll that was appropriately sculpted and her fashions really reflected the look and the feel of the African-American market. Outside of the movies and TV shows, any doll with any appearance that you buy in a store named Barbie is now Barbie. All the races, all the sizes, all the abilities. But in the movies, there are now two characters named Barbie. There's Brooklyn Barbie, who's black, and Malibu Barbie, who's white. The character of Brooklyn Barbie is another woman, similar in age and interests and aesthetics to Malibu Barbie, who also happens to be named Barbie, and who now goes on adventures with Malibu Barbie as equal main characters. Here is a Brooklyn Barbie from the movie Big City Big Dreams. She is a musician, as you can see. She is stunning. I love her. I hope that Brooklyn Barbie branches into her own solo media. So if you're listening, Mattel, she needs her own movies just like Malibu Barbie got. Otherwise, I love this. Black Barbie was followed by Latina Barbie in 1980 and Asian Barbie in 1981. Since her fashionista's line, Barbie has been available in multiple races and body sizes, even debuting the first transgender Barbie in a collaboration with actress Laverne Cox in 2022. Okay, I'm kind of obsessed with how much this looks like her. Like from the body to the hair, to the face sculpt, which is flawless, to the outfit. And she has so much articulation. In 2019, Barbie released a doll with a prosthetic leg and another with a wheelchair, which that year was the most popular Barbie fashionista doll in the UK. In 2023, Barbie released a doll with Down syndrome. Barbie has had thousands of incarnations, but while Barbie has been a babysitter and a teacher and a big sister, she's still not a mom. Because they want to keep Barbie young forever. <laughs> It doesn't age. Um, I guess it would probably have to go back to like maybe being a role model for kids. Like it's more relatable versus if Barbie was like older, it might not be. I think it's definitely how the kid interprets it, but I also think it's really cool that they aren't her children, they're her sisters. So I think it's really important that they, she doesn't have them right now. Barbie has had fantasy weddings, but continues to own and maintain an entirely separate life from her significant others, of which there have been more than just Ken. I was young. I, I was alone. G.I. Joe was in Vietnam. <laughs> Ken was in Canada. What kind of slut are you? <gasps> She's everything. He's just Ken. In the jacuzzi as well. What? In order to portray possibility, Barbie cannot be tied down to any attachments more onerous than her mortgage. I was a teacher, a ballerina, an astronaut, a princess, a competitive skater. <laughs> Did you remember that time I was a business lady? I had a suit and a briefcase. I raised those Lhasa Apsos for a while. That was a bust. For girls, the Barbie represented a kind of rebellion. There's no mom with three ungrateful kids Barbie. Right? Barbie is always single. She's always carefree. Ultimately, the foundational reason Barbie can't have children is because her very concept is to stand in opposition to that figure. But if Barbie herself was hostile to motherhood, I doubt a lot of moms would see the appeal. Instead, Barbie is represented as supportive of her friends who have children, such as in the once controversial Happy Family line of dolls, where she was highlighted as Midge's OBGYN. <laughs> Weren't you a doctor? Right. <laughs> Much better. But again, doctor is just one of over 200 careers Barbie has. In order to be an OBGYN and a pilot and a babysitter and a computer scientist during the day and a hot girl by night, logistically, she can't also go home and make dinner and put the kids to bed. I mean, just look at the time it would take her to get into this extra fancy outlet alone. If this woman was real, that would be insane. Look at the detail work here. She ate. Her purse is a mirror. Kids would shatter that and give her like a decade of bad luck. Babies would tug on those little earrings, pull them right out, rip those earlobes right open. I've seen it happen. <laughs> that was a good one. Tweet that and put it on my blog. Imagine you spend a whole day oiling yourself up to slip into this little latex number then you gotta powder yourself down so you stay in it, and then one of your kids throws up on it. 
No. Barbie would need like a staff of six. I need a staff of six. Honestly, I would just take one of those high-end silk stone secretary Barbies. Oh, she could transform my life with her efficiency. The 1960 approval of the birth control pill revolutionized women's reproductive rights, leading to a significant drop of births from 1965 onward. With young women now freed from unwanted pregnancy, more and more could dream of better lives. This meant getting an education. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, women's enrollment in colleges in the U.S. increased from 35% in 1960 to 56% in 2017. Today, women outnumber men in college enrollment. Uh, I'm sorry, are you here to see me? No, silly. I go here. You, you go where? Harvard. Law school. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? I know there was a whole thing about the pregnant midge doll, which I did actually have. In my house, it was never like, oh, that doll is controversial. But Barbie has been portrayed as a high school student, but then in the next line, she's a doctor. So maybe the confusion of how old she really is, they don't want to portray her as a pregnant teenager. Single women are the fastest growing household, with the fertility rate in the U.S. on a steady decline, dropping from an average of 1.64 children per woman in 2020, according to the CDC. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, in 2018, nearly half, 48.3% of women between the ages of 15 and 44 were childless, compared to 35.1% in 1976. Despite how common the choice to be child-free is, according to a 2017 study by Leslie Ashburnardo, an associate professor of psychology at Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, societal prejudice against child-free women is a real and persistent issue that translates into negative perceptions of women without kids. People blame women for not replacing the population, whatever that means, and rather than advocate for any systemic change, which might make it easier for everyone to have kids, their solution is to try to make women's lives hell if they don't. The U.S. is the only country among 41 nations that does not mandate any paid leave for new parents, according to data compiled by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And as of April 2018, the second smallest amount of paid leave required in any of the other 40 nations is about two months. And this lack of protection around women in the workforce who choose to have a child is made all the more complicated by the fact that women are increasingly obligated to enter the workforce in order to sustain a family. As we touch on pretty frequently here at TFD, the minimum wage has not even remotely kept up with the cost of living. Cost of living continues to radically outpace average wages and things that used to be much more affordable, for example, the higher education of your children, are increasingly becoming out of reach for even upper middle class families. In fact, there is much data that supports the idea that the more a country goes out of its way to create a set of policy ideals that support motherhood, the more women choose to become mothers. Without a narrative of what a stable, healthy, happy, aspirational woman looks like, how many kids won't know that they deserve better? Declaring any one thing as an ideal is always going to lead to problems and trade-offs. Ideals, by definition, do not exist. As film director and style icon Todd Haynes put it, quote, Barbie is a loaded cultural icon that stands for a whole prescribed femininity that little girls are confronted with at an early age. Betty Friedan argued in 1963's The Feminine Mystique that Barbie's lifestyle might present just as unattainable an ideal as the domestic bliss portrayed by housewives in post-war media. The truth is that today's children can't actually be anything they want. In terms of social mobility in the United States, the higher or lower your earning class, the less likely you are to change classes. Most girls in the United States cannot afford to become doctors, let alone astronauts or pop stars. But I would argue that, as children mature, their fantasies can work their way into our real lives. I don't think anyone looking at the progress of the 20th century working woman could deny that little girls with big dreams have changed the world for the better. Figures like Barbie plant seeds of dissatisfaction with how little today's children will be afforded compared to the most common white man of the 20th century. Maybe this also has to do with the decline in union participation until recently. Topical. Authority should derive from the consent of the governed, not from the threat of force. But if you'd like to hear more about that, go check out my video about unions for drag queens. Today's about Barbie. For Barbie to be everything, she needs to be able to afford anything. It's undeniable that getting into the workplace and controlling their own finances has increased women's social mobility. You have a resume? Yes, I do. Um... It's pink. 
Oh, and it's scented. I think it gives it a little something extra, don't you think? In her book, Shopping for Pleasure, historian Erica Diane Rappaport writes, quote, During a period in which a family's respectability and social position depended upon the idea that the middle-class wife and daughter remain apart from the market, politics, and public space, the female shopper was an especially disruptive figure, unquote. Meet me at the mall. For example, Barbie's early car ownership shows immense privilege but also represents the freedom to leave any situation she didn't want to be in. Her early homeownership, before women could even get loans, was the first time many girls saw a woman owning a home that she could inhabit without a man. Even when you're not married, people tend to treat you as a couple and you lose your individuality. And there's something great about knowing that when you wake up in the morning, you're there because you've chosen to be there and not because you have to be there. Money. Money is the biggest problem with all of this. Because if every woman in this room was independent if she was someone who had her own money, her own understanding of how to use it, and her own resources, marriage would take a very different view today. Because that is why we can all sit up here and say, well, I choose to be married. No, we get to choose to be married. We get to make those decisions because we Nobody has money. ever said that. I'm thanking you for saying it. Because yeah. when you say it, people are like, well, yeah. so. <laughs> you got some. Oh, yeah. So you, would, you yeah. got some money. And yeah. I would say, yes, I do. Yeah. Barbie's wealth also comes with the implication that she could easily afford to have her adopt or foster children. But the character, whichever version you subscribe to, has actively chosen not to do that. In fact, all the versions of Barbie have chosen not to do that. Because that is apparently what Barbie wants. Barbie already has everything Barbie wants. Barbie as a single woman is already a complete whole thought, successful and stable, and not being revisited right now. Thank you very much. No message under the weight of all these complex dynamics can be perfect. There are trade-offs made in representation. That's why you shouldn't give your child only one kind of toy to base their identity on. Barbie is just one of many narratives kids should see. Instead of criticizing children for coveting pink, sparkly, conventionally aspirational lifestyles, perhaps we should be inquiring into who commodified femininity in the first place. Bell Hooks in Feminism is for Everybody argued for a vision of feminism that encompassed diverse experiences of womanhood, including the choice to be femme or mask or have kids or remain childless. Trans people in particular have embraced Barbie, Ken, and the wider culture of dolls, which do not require anatomical correctness to represent their various gender identities. The idea of gender as beyond one's genitalia, as something you can adopt, something you can define for yourself and cultivate, is something ultimately liberating and has inherent appeal to trans people. Simone de Beauvoir wrote, quote, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. This has also led to the ballroom slang that refers to trans femmes themselves as, quote, the dolls. Hari Neff, who stars in the new Barbie movie, said, quote, identity politics and cinema aren't my favorite combination, but the name Barbie looms large over every American woman. Barbie's the standard. She's the girl. She's certainly the doll. She and her transgender girlfriends began calling themselves the dolls a couple of years ago, noting the phrases legacy and ballroom culture. Quote, but beneath the word doll is the shape of a woman who is not quite a woman, recognizable as such, but still fake. Doll is fraught, glamorous. She is and she isn't. We call ourselves the dolls in the face of everything we know we are, never will be, hope to be. We yell the word because the word matters. And no doll matters more than Barbie. The ways in which Barbie are gendered are always going to cause conversation, simply due to the fact that in order to signal an identity in her format, choices have to be made. If feminists like me have complex answers to questions like what is a woman, we're also going to struggle when it comes time to easily communicate femininity through a piece of plastic. They didn't think that a doll with breasts was uh, exactly appropriate. Why was it important to you that this doll have breasts? The whole idea was that a little girl could uh, dream dreams of growing up, and every grown-up that she uh, saw had breasts. As I originally learned from Trixie Mattel, M.G. Lord discusses in the seminal book Forever Barbie that at the time of her release, a parent's second biggest fear for their daughter was that she would be sexualized against her will. Their first and primary fear was that she wouldn't be well-groomed. 
perhaps a greater fear from mothers than having your daughter be too sexually available was to have your daughter unable to snare a husband because in the 1950s, husbands were meal tickets. And if this swaggering, oafish daughter could learn grooming from a Barbie doll, well, she'd just overlook those breasts and buy it for her child. I know just how to do it. By making you guys the hottest girls on campus. Again, I learned this from Trixie Mattel. Oh my God. This is a Trixie doll. This is not a Barbie. But since Trixie herself is so inspired by Barbie, I figured, why not include her? This is an Integrity Toys doll, and if you're not familiar with that brand, it means it's very expensive and very high quality, so. At this point, Trix, the dolls are the dolls. <laughs> but the choice to make Barbie well-groomed had consequences. Body image researchers Helga Dittmar, Emma Hallowell, and Suzanne Ive showed in a 2006 study that exposure to Barbie doll images reduced body esteem and increased desire for a thinner body shape in girls aged 5 to 8. Girls are meaningfully affected by the images they see, and in exchange for modeling womanhood, Barbie placed high expectations that every woman felt some pressure to fulfill. Society's forcing you to conform to some Barbie doll image, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thankfully, Barbie now comes in a variety of body types. Yet, her body is still unreasonable by any average measurement of Americans. Again, this is a trade-off. In order to understand the reasons why Barbie still doesn't have human measurements, we have to acknowledge the physical reality that in order for her clothes to fit correctly and be easily removable by children, the dolls are going to need to be slimmer to compensate. She's not a human. She's a doll. <laughs> she was never meant to have human proportions. When you have a doll and you dress her in fabric clothes, well then the thickness of the fabric would put her outfits under her chin. So she needs a long neck. And same thing with the waistline. Clothing looks good on a human being with certain dimensions. Now, none of us would necessarily want to have those dimensions, but she was designed just like a mannequin. By the time you put her clothes on her, her proportions aren't nearly as outlandish. In contrast, the anatomically accurate Lamely dolls look uncanny at that scale and have proven unpopular with mainstream audiences. The thing that I struggle with right now as I'm even saying this, as a toy designer, I know there has to be some like I got for the legs to move and for it to function. You start to run into all of these new problems that you're like, oh, maybe this is why they never did it. Since Mattel's fashionista's line broke open the different ways Barbie could look, Mattel has clearly shifted the focus of the doll back to its educational roots. Barbie is also a teacher, remember? Often, toys can be subtle ways to invite children to develop skills. Legos are engineering toys. Monopoly teaches you how awful our economic system is. And dolls teach you about socialization and identity. Look at products like Creatable Worlds, which lets kids switch their doll between gender representations and prepares them for the reality that gender is a spectrum. Oh my God. As a non-binary person, I had to buy this. I had to. This doll reminds me of a piece of advice I always give to people who want to have gender reveal parties. Only the baby can reveal its gender. I had G.I. Joe's, the male action dolls growing up, and I liked them. I was interested in them. I liked, again, that they had accessories and they had little pieces that you can use to play out scenarios, which playing out scenarios is not feminine or masculine. That's something that all kids do. All kids have imaginations and all kids have creativity. And I don't think that creativity and imagination is feminine. I think it's something that all people, regardless of how they identify as children, we are creative and we are imaginative. And that's before we really decide, like, how do I want to identify in life? How do I feel about myself on the scale of femininity versus masculinity. These can be foundational narratives for people, so some never lose their fascination with the signature Barbie look. Today, lots of people enjoy Barbie court, including feminists. The Barbie movie definitely is reviving that Barbie core aesthetic, which I really appreciate. I really like the pink, that, and just sometimes the over-the-top parts of it, 
like a holiday Barbie from the 90s where Barbie core was like really strong. Big poofy gowns and sparkles and everything. I would love to see more Barbie core inspired dolls. There's a reason why Bob Mackie has so frequently collaborated with the brand. <laughs> Ken, what have you got in there? Is that one of my Bob Mackies? No. Uh, sneaky little queen. Plastic, bitch. Like runway fashion and drag, Barbie's style, and by extension, Barbie core, is the epitome of presenting as feminine without consideration for the straight male gaze. I've said this before, but like the fantasy element of it, everything's heightened, everything's over the top. She's not meant to look realistic necessarily. She's meant to reflect reality, but not be a one-to-one -one translation of reality. Barbie wasn't necessarily wearing pink all the time originally. That's something that kind of grew over time. But yeah, like she's ever evolving and ever changing. While many of Barbie Core's proponents would agree that femininity shouldn't be expected of anyone, it is being wielded as a method of reclamation, rebellion, and empowerment. Quote, it's a personal issue because almost every woman has owned a Barbie and every woman has some relationship with or opinion about Barbie, said Kim Colmoni, senior VP and global head of design for Barbie and fashion dolls at Mattel. Here is the Barbie from my birth year. 1989. I wish somebody had bought me this at the time rather than me having to hit up eBay in my 30s. Like every kid should have this as an option. Femininity should be an option. Maybe a boy that you buy a Barbie for will never play with it, but my parents spent a lot of money on sports equipment that I never played with and had no meaningful impact on what would be my eventual journey in life. Growing up, I had dolls. My parents were very liberal. They never stopped me from collecting dolls because I was a boy, which was brilliant. And yeah, I think they were just like a feminine outlet for me. I was always quite a feminine boy and I loved the glamour and the fantasy and the long hair and all the different textures. I was incredibly drawn to them. Um, they're a great escape for me. Some people read books for their escapism. Some people watch films for their escapism or watch TV and I collect dolls. That's my form of escapism. People have always been like critical of femininity and that's why like Barbie and the Disney princesses and stuff like that get so much hate towards them throughout time because they're not living up to whatever people expect a woman to be. Whereas, you know, male centric toy brands and icons and characters can just exist and that's fine. Every child needs to have all of the options presented to them because some people are just going to grow up and have less conventional lives. And those kids are gonna need those options the most. I think they're doing a good job with Monster High. They could do a lot better with Barbie. They could take some cues from MGA. I want them to come out and say, this is a gay Ken. This is a gay Barbie. They have not done that. Everything is coded and it's like, why are we like tiptoeing around the subject? Again, it comes down to money. Whether the reason is economic, health-related, or personal preference, there always have been and there always will be child-free women, just as there are child-free men and child-free people of other more niche genders. Why, hello. After the introduction of the pill and following the legalization of a woman's right to choose, not that it lasted, women's participation in the workforce in the U.S. grew from 37.7% in 1960 to 58.6% in 2019, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Having a supported, normalized, and healthy place in society for child-free women boosts the economic and social prospects of everyone. Even if you're a man, this involves you. As argued by Michael Kimmel in The Gendered Society, women having greater control over their reproductive choices was one factor that led to increased expectations for men to be involved fathers. I hope I don't have to explain to you why men being able to be involved in their children's lives will have positive benefits for all of us, but obviously it will. My, my favorites rotate depending on the time of day. This was my favorite head sculpt. And he is the first Ken in a long time to come out that has a beard. And he's like a dude. He's like a regular dude to me. He's realistic. He has a beard. He has facial hair. The facial hair thing is like a big, is a big deal for me. Teaching girls independence is not teaching them selfishness. My close friend Nicole Cohen once wrote, quote, When I say that I don't want children, I mean any children. 
I don't want to be the primary caretaker responsible for another human life. And that is not inherently selfish. That's another interesting one, the presumed selfishness. In my own humble opinion, the decision to bring new human life into the world is massive and consequential. I've had many people who are able to have children tell me things like, if it happens, it happens. But to me, that is an indication that you did not feel strongly about bringing children into this world. And that, from my perspective, is more selfish than my honesty." Unquote. But really, I don't think we have anything to worry about. Media figures like Barbie have transformed the very underpinnings of womanhood, and there's no putting that genie back in the bottle. When Saudi Arabia stopped selling Barbie in 1995 because religious authorities felt she wasn't dressed modestly enough, demand was so rampant that similar dolls wearing hijabs were created to fill the need. I have nothing against the hijab, if that's a choice a woman makes, but forcing women to dress or not dress in any particular way isn't cool with me. I'm not French. Despite these authoritarian efforts and thanks to the core concept of a fashion doll, the hijabs could be removed. That action represented a future that might include the girls playing with those dolls, making up their minds for themselves. That's the very essence of Barbie as an object. Wherever you're coming from, Barbie represents potential. For a month, everyone I know is posting a photo of themselves, finishing with the phrase, this Barbie is, with a humorously specific description of their own lives presented as the Barbie ideal. In our interconnected, commodified society, what we idealize will continue to grow and expand as each person interprets those messages for themselves. If your audience doesn't like what you do, does it make sense to keep doing it? No, it doesn't. At one point, Barbie was embarrassingly bad at math, and happy to tell you. Math class is tough. And now, to Gen Z, she's an elite game developer. But she still doesn't have children because she represents choice. Parenthood is making a choice, but it is ultimately making the choice to have less choice. When you have kids, you can't just walk around your house in the middle of the day smoking weed, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Walking around the house smoking weed because I'm childless. I'm about to binge watch 10 hours of Storage Wars, also because I don't have kids. It's possible to remain childless and alone. You just have to want it. Taking on responsibility to anyone but yourself is a trade-off, and it can be worth it. But that choice is already sold to children by virtue of the caregivers they already know. Maybe we could let someone who doesn't have a giant baby in their belly give it a try. So that isn't what this specific toy is supposed to champion. There's a reason why it's so magical when your mother buys you your first Barbie. She's telling you that no matter who you want to be or who you end up being, you're gonna be okay. I am a toy ambassador at FAO Schwarz, which means that I get to sell toys and share my knowledge. They came out with a Chelsea with scoliosis and a Barbie with Down syndrome. One day, a little girl with Down syndrome came into the store and she's like, look at this doll. And she was just so happy. And I'm like, I'm so happy that you see yourself represented in a doll. All the dolls you could choose from are very different heights, different skin tones. One of some of them are curvy, some of them are more petite. Barbie's not just a girl. She's Barbie. She can do whatever she can put your mind to. Barbie was the first doll that, to have breasts and a female figure to show little girls that they can grow up and they can be like Barbie and they can be a chef and they can be president and they can be a doctor. Paradoxically, Barbie is also just a singular brand. While she will survive as long as capitalism itself and probably well after, she was never meant to be the only character a child consumes. Barbie coexists in harmony with lots of other kinds of women, some from the same line of products. I've known Barbie since we were in matching cribs. I hang out at her crib every day. I text Barbie so much, she's got a separate phone just for me. Here's the thing. Ah! Perhaps we've evolved past the concept of a main character or ideal, but we haven't evolved past subversion. And in a world where survival is pinned to chasing aspirations, we need the kids who don't want or can't have children to know that a life without babies is just as important, valid, fulfilling, and just as impactful. Every woman has equal value to herself and others, because every person does. In a way, Barbie getting both support and pushback from different angles of the culture wars does prepare girls for the knowledge that their identities and politics will never be woman enough for people who don't think women should be allowed to make their own choices. 
All I ever wanted was a ballerina Barbie in her pretty pink tutu. I was 10. And do you know what they got me? Malibu Barbie. Malibu Barbie. The nightmare. The nerve. They had to go. Feminine people will only be fully free of the patriarchy when we stop valuing nuclear families as aspirational or a solution to the isolating, crippling loneliness that the patriarchy itself produces. Instead of using marriage as a way to wield a man's power, we need to create a model for kids to generate and wield power of their own. I do not like you. I feel indifferent towards you. <laughs> Look how cool and self-actualized and fun this extra fly Ken is. Is he gay-coded? Is he trans non-binary? Is he a straight man simply inspired by femme fashion? Is this a they? I don't know. I'm a they. And out of drag, this is what I look like. <laughs> Especially when I travel. And my viewers want to know, on a scale of nine to 10, how gay are you really? But it doesn't matter. Some kid will buy that Ken and turn him into whatever they need him to be. And that was the whole object, was to give the child something to play with and to dream with. Where the child, through play, could project into whatever was on her mind. Because that's what kids do. At least they did with Barbie. While I see so many redeeming pieces of the Barbie narrative and of Barbie as an idea... We do have to acknowledge that Mattel itself as a corporation is definitely part of the problem. What do you think I'm running here? A cabaret? I would have said a debtor's prison. Supporting them is not a radical feminist decision. A business at that scale, even a toy company, is not all fun and games. They exploit workers. In fact, Barbie has never been manufactured in America so that Mattel could avoid paying laborers what they were worth. The movie studios that they're planning decades of feature projects with very likely lied to delay the SAG after strike that now joins the WGA strike in Hollywood so that they could dress Margot Robbie up in little dresses to promote their stupid movie. That's their partner. I mean, we did everything we could to avert a strike, including extend by 12 days in an unprecedented amount of time. And we really had to convince the membership that in earnest, we thought that, w that we would be able to carve deeper inroads. And that was why uh, we felt that if we could only extend a little longer, uh, that maybe we could avert a strike. But in fact, they didn't come to the table all that often. They canceled a lot of meetings. I thought maybe they were duking it out behind closed doors and they were actually going to come back with something of substance that was meaningful. And boy, did I get a surprise because we got bupkis, basically. And, you know, I think we were duped maybe to allow for more promotion of summer movies before we you know, struck. By the way, before we continue, Stan Fran. Stan Fran Drescher. This is not a Barbie doll. Mattel also uses massive amounts of petrochemicals to produce, ship, and market their products. She's a Barbie doll, Ken. There's a hundred million just like her. Hell, they even send Pinkertons after people. Like many of its so-called competitors, Mattel is owned by financial firms Vanguard and BlackRock, meaning that despite whatever progressive aims the Barbie team might have, it is ultimately invested in whatever is profitable. Reporter Barbie, you can ask me any question you want. Well, how come you're so amazing? No comment! Ah! <laughs> no, seriously, no comment. <laughs> ah, I love you guys. For more about the ways to fix this, subscribe for part two. Oh, and the president was arrested for murder. More on that tomorrow night. Or you can turn to another channel. Oh, do not turn to another channel. Right now, in order to be what she is with the reach she has, Barbie is as much a symbol of capitalism as she is of anything else. But at her core concept, it is clear to me that Barbie represents more in the popular imagination. She represents possibility for the kind of person who is simultaneously being fed misogynistic myths. Dolls are a way for young people to experiment with identities and lives that they might not otherwise imagine or empathize with. 
They're a way of preserving the physicalities of identity, and that doesn't necessarily need to be about capitalism. The dolls we make and the ways that we make and dispose of them can and should change. But that will require the motivation to decouple femininity itself from consumption. And that is not something we can expect little girls to do all on their own. Could Barbie ever have been uncontroversial? I don't think so. Because for the past 50 years, femininity has been a contested space. Capitalism is the worst thing about Barbie because it's the worst thing about us. As progressive as playing with Barbies can be, buying a new Barbie is never an anti-capitalist act, and therefore it's never a feminist one. I'm fired? But out there in our imagination can be a Barbie who changes the way that dolls are created and consumed. Barbie can be whatever you want her to be, that's the point. You could buy a Dr. Barbie, but then change her clothes and then put her in something else and she's something completely different or whatever you want to do with her. And I think that's really exciting in a lot of ways. Amy Lekhoff once said in the New York Times, quote, Barbie gave us no messages. It was we who gave Barbie meaning. And maybe that's the point. For all the talk of what is a woman, I think the answer is pretty obvious. A woman isn't a womb. A woman isn't the shape of her chromosomes. A woman isn't something that a man possesses. A woman is whatever the fuck she wants to be. The fact is, sometimes it's hard to walk in a single woman's shoes. That's why we need really special ones now and then to make the walk a little more fun. Well, that's part one of the Barbie series. I'd like to thank my guests and you for taking the time to spend with me. If you'd like more content, you can check out my Patreon, Coffee, and other membership options below in the description. And speaking of, I would like to thank all of the producers of the show for your support. Please like, subscribe, and do whatever you want with the bell. That's none of my business. If you'd like to find me on social media, you're an adult. You know how to do that. Yeah, I'm happy